In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Happy Feast of Nativity, everyone. You know our hearts, and you know that we miss you so dearly in the church. Uh, but we are praying that God will make these days shorter for us and that we will be together soon in the church celebrating. But nevertheless, we are definitely celebrating. Today we are celebrating the Feast of Epiphany. Today's meditation or tonight's meditation is entitled Quench That Thirst. A lot of water we have read in, the, in, the, in all the readings, from the readings of the gospel or the readings in the liturgy, the readings in the liturgy of the water as well. We've seen water and we know that water really quenches our thirst. But there's a different thirst that we need to quench today or that epiphany should reveal to us there's a different thirst that we need to quench. Today we celebrate this great feast of epiphany, the day which the divinity of Jesus is revealed to us through the baptism of John in the Jordan River. That we know that he is the Son of God who came for our salvation. Now some may argue that his birth should be seen as the revelation, as the epiphany. The word epiphany means revelation. Up until this point, really, Jesus wasn't known to many people. Even John in the gospel that we just heard in John uh, Chapter 1, verse 26, it says, And John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there stands one among you whom you do not know. Therefore we call this day that he was baptized Epiphany, Theophany, Revelation, because it, he became known to many at this time. Epiphany is the feast which reveals the most holy trinity through the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. God the Father spoke from the heaven about the Son. The Son was baptized by Saint John the forerunner and the Holy Spirit descended upon the Son as a dove. From the ancient times in the early church this feast was called the day of illumination, the feast of light. Since God is light and has appeared to illuminate all those that sat in darkness in the region in the shadow of death, to save the fallen race of humankind by his grace. On the feast of baptism, on the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Church proclaims our faith, this glorious mystery, incomprehensible to our human mind and human intellect. One God in three persons, it teaches us to confess and glorify, really, the Holy Trinity, one in essence, indivisible. It exposes and overthrows the error of the early teachings that attempted to explain the Creator to the world with human terms. A God that we could understand fully with our mind, our limited mind, is not a God worth worshipping. In the early church, it was a custom to baptize all the catechumens, all those that were seeking to enter the faith, all those that were studying and learning about the faith. It would happen normally during the Vespers of Epiphany. So that baptism also revealed as a spiritual illumination of humankind. St. John Damascus says that the Lord was baptized not because he himself had need for cleaning, but to bury human sin by water, to fulfill the law, to reveal the mystery of the Holy Trinity, and finally to sanctify the nature of water, and to offer to us a form and an example of baptism. Baptism is to enlighten us, to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, to fulfill our calling, to quench that thirst that is within us. The thirst, the calling to love our God with all our heart, with all our souls and all our strength. That thirst and that calling to love our neighbor as ourself. The thirst and calling to bless those who curse you. To be patient with my husband and my wife or my wife, my children, my siblings, my friends, my co-workers. To be patient. 
to care for one another and to treat everyone with dignity regardless of their gender, regardless of their race, regardless of their age, to live a non-selfish life, to go out of our way for others. Our thirst, our thirst to share the gospel, the good news with everyone that we encounter. Our thirst to sanctify the Lord, our God in our hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. 1 Peter 3.13 Baptism isn't a goal. Baptism isn't the end. It's the start. St. Paul says in Galatians 3.27, it says, For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Baptism shouldn't just be this ritual that we do, not just the bathing that we do. It should be R&R, &R, removing and receiving. Prior to the time of this baptism, of the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Jewish people had a baptism, which was a baptism to cleanse the body from any impurities, from any impurities of like uh, maybe touching bones of a dead person, uh, eating unclean food, or being with a leopard, and it's, uh, and it's, but it didn't remove sin. In scripture it says, in Leviticus it says, let one wash his body in pure water. The Jewish practice was a preparation for what was to come. The baptism that was established by Christ was much more than just a cleaning from the outside or a ritual. It was for the forgiveness of sins, the removal of the hold of sin, the removal of death, the hold of death over us, and the receiving of the Holy Spirit, the receiving of salvation, the receiving of life. Christians are free to walk the path to the union with God now. Those who have been baptized live now in the hope of life in a close relationship with God. We are freed from all sin through the grace of the Holy Spirit. Saint Gregory of Nicaea tells us on the following, tells us the following on this sacred event. And he says, today he, Jesus, God, is baptized by John that he might cleanse him, that would be us, cleanse him who was defiled that he might bring the Spirit from above and exalt men to heaven, that he who had fallen might be raised up, and he who had cast him down might be put to shame. And this gift is not the water that bestows, but the command of God, and the visitation of the Spirit that comes sacramentally to set us free. But the water serves to express cleansing. Sounds a little bit familiar when you hear the words, exalt men to heaven. Remember, incarnation, St. Athanasius start, uh, speaks about the incarnation, and he said, God became man so that man may become God. We get sometimes a blessing in the house, and the priest comes to your home, and he sprinkles water in every room of the house. He goes around in every single room, and sometimes he'll do the closets. He'll get every nook and cranny of the house, and I know when I go over, like, I make a big mess. So I apologize to all the people that I went over and I made a big mess. But get every little nook and cranny with water, which is a sign that God's blessing is upon every small detail of our daily lives. It's calling to sanctify every aspect of my life, recognizing that every dimension of who we are as human beings is to be baptized in Christ. Dying to sin and raising with him in holiness. True Christians is not about escaping the world or simply a matter of emotions or having good morals. No, we are called to become like God, to participate in his infinite holiness, to the path of the day. Deeps of our, the depths of our souls in every thought, every deed that you and I do. So this epiphany, this theophany, this feast, let us bring to the forefront 
of our minds and our heart our baptism, our illumination, that we could respond to Jesus Christ with great blessing in this world, that we could share his life and become fully who he created us to be in his image and his likeness. Baptism is not magic. Holy water is not a magic potion. This is a sacrament, a mystery. It's an invisible grace by a visible means. And all sacraments need our cooperation. God doesn't work alone. There's a synergy between God and men. There's a synergy between God and humans. And God needs our cooperation when it comes to any type of sacrament. He needs our heart, a heart that is willing. It's not about going through the motions. It's not about, it's about putting our heart into it. We want to be transformed, then we need to put our heart into things. If we don't cooperate with the Lord's mercy by repentance and growth in holiness, holy water will do nothing. Will do nothing for us. Our heart needs to be ready. But if we approach every day of our life, if we approach every circumstance or every encounter that we have, every sermon, every teaching, we approach in humility and in faith with a thirst to fulfill our daily lives in Christ, then God will grant us that then the life-giving fountain will nourish our spiritual life like water nourishes a plant that on a dry day. One of the fathers, and I'll read this quote from you, he says, the meaning of the feast of Christmas is fulfilled in Epiphany. For now it is made clear that the one born in Bethlehem is truly God. Come to restore our fallen nature and to renew the entire creation by uniting humanity with divinity in himself. And even as the Son of God entered our world at his birth, he now enters the flowing water of a river in order to make it holy, in order to bring his blessing and fulfilling fulfillment upon the world that he created. For the entire creation was subjected to futility because of the rebellion of our first parents, Adam and Eve. As St. Paul wrote to the Romans, the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now and will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Epiphany makes it possible for us to quench our thirst of holiness, to quench our thirst of love, to quench our thirst of belonging to a family of Christ. But we must have a thirst for holiness, for the divine love life for which we want, for which we were made for. This is truly a joyful and blessed life. This is truly a blessed time that we are living in. Let us start by thirsting, not thirsting for the things of the world, but thirsting for God. Jesus answered the Samaritan woman and said, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up to everlasting life. We don't need to be dying of thirst anymore. We never had to. We're the ones that chose the ways of fulfilling our thirst. But we don't need to be dying of thirst. Instead, let us be filled by his overflowing mercy. Let us be filled and let us quench our thirst by his unconditional love and by his unwavering hope that we are anchored in him, and glory be to our God forever. Amen.